Hey folks, how's it going? In this video, we're going to go over mass, weight, and gravitational field strength. So let's get started. Now, to kick off this section on Newton's laws, we're going to look at mass, weight, and gravitational field strength, and how these three things relate to each other. Now, the first thing you need to realize is that mass and weight are not the same thing, but are often confused in everyday life. We then have the definitions for each to show you how they're different. So we say that mass is the quantity of particles that make up an object, i.e. it's how much matter makes up an object. It is a scalar quantity, and it is measured in kilograms which we shorten to kg. So remember a scalar quantity is one that just has a magnitude or size only, there's no direction. And then we have the definition for weight, and we say that weight is the force due to gravity acting on an object. It is a vector quantity, since it's a force, and is measured in newtons, which we give the symbol capital N. And remember, a vector quantity is one that has both magnitude, i.e. a size, and a direction. So we've got that weight is a vector, but mass is a scalar, and we have that weight is a force, but mass is not. And mass and weight are linked by an equation which also includes something called gravitational field strength. And the equation is this thing here, W equals mg, where capital W is weight measured in newtons, m is mass measured in kilograms, and lowercase g is gravitational field strength measured in newtons per kilogram. And you can either write that as n kg to the power of minus 1, or as n slash kg. And lastly, we have a fun fact here, which says the company Weight Watchers should really be called Mass Watchers, since mass in kilograms is what is measured on the scales, but does it have the same ring to it? So whenever someone stands on scales to see how heavy they are, they're measuring their mass in kilograms, not their weight in newtons. But this is something that people often mix up, so it's important that you know the difference. Now I'm just going to show you a quick simulation to help you understand the difference between mass and weight. So if you have a look here, we have a range of masses going from 1 kilogram to 5 kilograms, and then on the right here we have something called a Newton balance, which can be used to measure forces. And in this case, we're going to be measuring the weight of each of our masses. So you'll see right now it's set to 0 Newtons, because there's nothing being suspended from the balance here. But if we put a 1 kilogram mass on our Newton balance, you'll see that we now have just under 10 Newtons. If I then replace the 1 kilogram mass with a 2 kilogram mass, you'll see we now have a force of just under 20 Newtons. Similarly, for the 3 kilogram mass, just under 30 Newtons. 4 kilogram mass, just under 40 Newtons. And hopefully you can see the pattern now, but if we put the 5 kilogram mass on, we get just under 50 Newtons. And this means that 1 kilogram of mass roughly corresponds to about 10 Newtons of weight. And remember, we've just seen that these things are linked through something called the gravitational field strength. And the gravitational field strength on Earth is actually at a value of 9.8 Newtons per kilogram. So we've got this factor of roughly 10, but it's actually 9.8. So let's jump back to the notes and see what gravitational field strength actually is. Well, the definition that you need to learn for the exam is something like this. Gravitational field strength is the gravitational force per unit mass. You could also say the weight per unit mass as that comes from the equation. And what does this mean? Well, you can think about it as being the gravitational force exerted on one kilogram of mass. And we've already seen the units are newtons per kilogram, which is written as n kg to the power of minus one. Or remember, you can write that as n slash kg. Now let's say you were asked to define gravitational field strength in a test or an exam, but you can't quite remember the wording. Well, what you can do is just look at the equation to help you with the wording. So if we look back at the equation here, you can see W equals mg, and if we rearrange this equation for little g, then we divide both sides by m, the mass, to get g equals the weight divided by the mass. So that's like saying gravitational field strength g is equal to the weight, or the gravitational force, divided by the mass, and that is the per unit mass. And looking back at our definition here, that's all it was. Gravitational force or weight per unit mass, with this per word meaning divided by. It then goes on to say here that g on Earth is 9.8 newtons per kilogram, but it takes different values on different planets. And here you have a table of values which you get given on the data sheet in the exam. So you can see that the gravitational field strength on Earth is 9.8, which we just said. The Sun has the largest gravitational field strength at 270 newtons per kilogram. The next largest would be Jupiter at 23 newtons per kilogram. And you'll notice we have a couple that are the same, so Mars and Mercury both have a gravitational field strength of 3.7. And lastly, one worth noting is the moon, because sometimes you'll get questions relating to the moon, and you'll see we have a value of 1.6 newtons per kilogram. So if you wanted to remember some from this table, I would recommend remembering 9.8 newtons per kilogram for the Earth, maybe 3.7 for Mars and Mercury, and then 1.6 for the moon. Now I'm just going to show you one last simulation to help you understand the gravitational field strength. Here you'll see we have 3 kilogram masses above the surface of different objects here. So we have the moon, 
Earth, Jupiter and the Sun. And one way of thinking about gravitational field strength is it's sort of like a gravitational pull on an object on that planet. And we could think about this to see which of our four different objects are going to exert the biggest gravitational pull on the three kilogram mass, or in other words, which is the largest gravitational field strength? Well, we know from the table that the sun has a gravitational field strength of 270 newtons per kilogram, and that was by far the biggest value. So we should expect the sun to pull the three kilogram mass with a greater force. And the next biggest value, you remember, was Jupiter at 23 newtons per kilogram. So we would expect Jupiter to have the second biggest pulling force. And then we have the Earth at 9.8 newtons per kilogram and the Moon at 1.6 newtons per kilogram. So the Sun should exert the biggest pull and the Moon should exert the smallest pull on the 3 kilogram mass. And we can confirm this by looking at their weights. So if we were to do a W equals mg calculation, on the Sun we could do W equals mg to get roughly 800 newtons. On Jupiter we would get roughly 70 newtons. On the Earth roughly 30 newtons and on the Moon roughly 5 newtons. So the weight on the 3 kilogram mass is going to be much larger for the Sun than for the Moon. And I'll just click play to show you the pull that each of these has. And one last time. So it's clear that the sun exerts the biggest pull and that means that the 3 kilogram mass is moving towards it quicker. And then on the other side for the moon, the 3 kilogram mass took the longest time to reach the surface. That's all for this video folks, thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a like, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.